Hey guys, I just wanted to do my reaction review to to Arrow season six, episode nineteen, The Dragon. So this is a bear. This is basically a villain centric episode. It base the main characters of the story are Ricardo Diaz, who is nicknamed the Dragon, not Ricard, not Richard Dragon, as in the comic books. And Black Siren, who they've been making the right-hand woman to him, King James, Prometheus, Zoom, because the writers have no creative plans to make her anything but. And yet people want her to be the villain of the story, or at least some people want her to be Black Siren to stay a villain instead of getting a redemption arc. I don't get it. Um, so basically the two go to Bloodhaven because they want to join up with the Quadrant, a, a clandestine, um, crime organization that rules all the crime throughout North America. And Diaz wants to see at the table because it essentially means that, um that he will be able to help it will be able to help him like further consolidate grow an empire and it was kind of a whole i guess i guess the kind of whole situation of he'll scratch their backs he'll scratch they'll scratch his but um cardi i guess cardi jr or cartier jr you can, you can tell even from his first scene, he's kind of this like spoiled rich kid who has like who even um, Diaz points out has a silver spoon in his mouth and he's killed, but he's had everything handed to him. Because basically, he has because um, Cartier Cartier Jr. has Diaz have ha complete all these um, different tasks, which is going to pick up you know get a witness from his crime work. From, from his um, own, you know, corner of the crime organization, from the FBI getting pictures that he's still alive, the point where he has to go and pick him up and get him out of FBI custody. The difference is that um, Cartier Jr. and, like, the mob boss that's, and the um, assassin that's driving his car basically try to gun him down because... Neither him or his father have any intention of giving him a seat at the table. And yet, yet listen to Black Siren constantly bitching about how they have really no one, you know, how he's basically being asked to, um, you know, it's like... You know why are you letting these people kind of constantly bitch you around? Like you, you're better. Than, you're basically better than this. And I mean, here's the, I mean, here's the thing about this is why this episode was a complete mixed bag for me. Um, it gave more pathos and characterization to Ricardo Diaz and established him. Because the episode opened with a flashback to when he was in an orphanage 32 years prior to the um, events of this to the to present day, in which he was his father presumably abandoned him and he was bullied by this kid named Jesse and basically treated like crap and like a loser and told me, and he was constantly telling him telling him he wasn't worth anything even to the point where he even bur burned a picture of his father. Where he later said that he would reach into the um, trash bin when it was on fire to reach into a picture to get the picture, and he had blisters for weeks and cracked skin. And he was later telling Cartier Jr. when he went back to his club and with a black siren killed every one of his men to the point where he was tied to a chair and was torturing him and saying that. You know, you had everything handed to you. I had to fight for every scrap of every fight for everything that I've had, whether it was a scrap of food or working his way up, you know, his own like criminal his way throughout the you know, his criminal empire. And creating this like little conspiracy where he's buying like every out where he was like, 
you know, bribing and coercing every inch of law enforcement and members of local government in Star City to be under his thrall. And it even gets to the point where when he's beating up on Cartier Jr. and when he eventually, at the end of the episode, he tracks down his old childhood bu bully, brings him to the top of a building, and burns him alive along with the picture of his old father. That even that even Black Siren finds him finds it unsettling, and even points out to the fact that he that he that he is that Ricardo Diaz is very similar to um, Zoom in the sense they both grow up in orphanage in orphanages and they let their hatred consume them and in which Ricardo Diaz says that he's in control of his hatred where Black Siren is right that he's based that Ricardo Diaz is not is no is basically is Zoom and you know his his sanity and hatred his insanity and hatred has gotten the better of him and he's he is similar to Zoom minus the superpowers and his insan his ins hatred and insanity has gotten the better of him, even though he's able to keep it under like under the cool exterior. But the the events of this the events of this episode show that the more time Black Siren spends with him, the more she realizes that both men are similar to the point where she's kind of unsettled by the torture of both Cartier Jr. and. You know the killing of Jesse, but in the end, um, Diaz gets a seat at the table because he is able to um, basically strap um, Cardio Cardio Junior with a bomb in the building where like all the members are supposed to meet, and he's able to kill a bunch of the henchmen, especially with the help of. Black Siren, he, he kills his dad when he keeps calling him, like, a, you know, a street thug and a loser, which is kind of, um, tr which kind of gets him triggered because Jesse always used to call him a loser and, you know, never amount to anything, and he would basically shoot, um, Cartier, you know, Cartier, Cartier, Junior, Senior, Senior, so the rest of the members were just kind of like, oh, they were kind of, you know, we're all about order and discipline, but we will hear you out to what ideas you have because um, the woman who said that line um, thought the son was an idiot and I guess didn't really think much of Cartier Junior Senior. So... I mean, it's kind of weird because of the fact that this is like some like major crime organization that we never that was never mentioned throughout the six seasons of Arrow, and it took Ricardo Diaz less effort to get a seat at the table than it did when trying to organize a little conspiracy in which he bought a major, you know, the law, you know, the police, the police department, and city officials at Star City. And there are only a few scenes in which um, Felicity and Curtis come to enough of a truce and understanding in which they will continue with their, you know, entrepreneurship of, you know, the company of Helix and Felicity freaking out because, you know, she's not able to track Oliver anymore like she did when she, when she was working in the bunker and apparently was wearing a different jacket because of some explosion in the glaze. So she has no idea about the fate, what his fate is. And it's not until he, he gets back to, she gets back to their apartment that she, that he realizes that he's in one piece and how he says like, Oh, I made a promise to William that I would come home every night in spite of the dangers. And I'm going to make that same promise to you. So, I would give this um, episode a 6 out of 10 because, like I said, um, it gave more pathos and characterization to Ricardo Diaz and his motivations. And basically, the reason why he wants to build himself to be, up to be a, a powerful crime lord, especially in Star City, is because 
He doesn't want to feel like the loser that he was made out to be throughout his childhood. But story-wise, I didn't really care about him, you know, trying to get into the Quadrant and all this other crap. I really thought it would be more, like, juxtaposed with flashbacks to how he went from being in an orphanage to being, you know, in a, you know, the criminal underworld and how he works his way up the ranks. And, you know, I thought this would be more... I mean, I know it wasn't like the two-porter that, um... We got with um, Deathstroke, you know, in the earlier half of season six, but I thought they, they would at least do something with that where just how it, it, it um, established, you know, his separation from his son and how he eventually went on to go and become Oliver's enemy in season two, it would eventually establish how he went to, how he went be, to become an antagonist for Oliver in this season. It didn't. It was just like one flashback and then him just um, trying to get into this criminal organization and him monologuing about how he was treated like crap and didn't want to be treated like a loser ever again. So I felt like it was kind of a missed opportunity and why this episode was a mixed bag. And also, it's a testament to why this whole season is a mixed bag and it's no surprise why Mark Guggenheim and Wendy Miracle are no longer going to be executive pursuit producers after this season i mean they said that Mir randy miracle is leaving and margunhai was just going to be an executive consultant after this and that one of the co-executives beth schwartz was going to be promoted to the main showrunner for season seven i mean you, you would think they were not getting fired or demoted or like losing their say but you can blame it on sexism or being an accomplice to Guggenheim but I'm pretty sh but I'm willing to speculate that Miracle got fired and Mark Guggenheim was basically put in a position where he's just like he had even far less say in um the structure and storytelling of Arrow just so like like he's like okay we're gonna put you in a corner to make sure that whoever takes over for you doesn't make sure that make sure that the show that we'll keep you around it then make sure that the uh, um the structure and storytelling of arrow is in a sharp departure of what we've gotten before but but you're not but you're not gonna have a major say in how the story is because of i mean i don't i mean i don't think this is one of the the worst seasons of arrow was also not one of its better seasons but there are also like a number there are also like a lot of people who seem to feel like this is one of the worst seasons of Arrow to the point where episode 617 got the lowest ratings in the show's history. And I think that's the reason why they're basically, the CW is basically saying is like, okay, you guys are basically one for four, but you guys are out. We, we need um, somebody else to help like salvage the show. But, you know, next week it's going to be about, it's, you know, the episode is called Shifting Allegiances, so maybe Black Siren will get a redemption arc. At this point, I've kind of completely given up on that fact that it's, that's even going to happen, which is basically going to be this fight between Oliver and Diaz, in which, depending on who is not being beaten to a bloody pulp, it will determine which one of them has to leave town and never, never return home. So... In any case, guys, how do you feel about the episode? What are your predictions for the rest of the season? Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. If you like this episode, if you like this video, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.